A pleasant good evening, Erev Tov. Welcome to the first ever Life Legacy Donor Appreciation Event. My name is Jonah Kaplan, joining you tonight from Raleigh, North Carolina. My job, I'm the political and investigative reporter here at ABC 11 in Raleigh, but my life is defined by my family and my faith. Am Yisrael, the people of Israel. We know that from generation to generation, we must leave a legacy for our children, a Jewish community, a Jewish identity, as strong and perhaps even stronger than the one given to us by our parents and grandparents. We're not merely talking about tzedakah, charity, we're talking about hashka'a, investment, a legacy of investing in our future. And legacy giving starts with one, echad. And for life and legacy, that one was Harold Grinspoon. Harold, he's the youngest nanogenarian around. Harold be thy name. The first donor, but not the last. And tonight, we celebrate from Harold 18,000 more number ones. And that's each one of you. Now I know we're all disappointed we can't be at the usual life and legacy gathering in the beautiful, luxurious, and scenic city of Springfield, Massachusetts tonight. Because really, who wouldn't want to visit the Basketball Hall of Fame for a 13th time? We nonetheless come together virtually tonight to thank you, to recognize you, and celebrate what can be achieved with a dream and a challenge. Every one of you, through your legacy gift, is making a commitment that will carry the Jewish future forward ensuring that those we may never meet will continue to gather, to worship, to learn, to mourn and celebrate life, to care for one another and the most vulnerable among us, to stand up against hatred and discrimination, to mobilize in times of crisis, support Medinat Yisrael, the state of Israel, and help nurture that connection with Eretz Moledet, our ancient homeland. In short, every one of you is fulfilling the mitzvah, the commandment that there will be vital Jewish life in every community where Jews live. Each one of us has our own very personal reason for making our gift, and I'll get to mine later this evening. But first, we want to share some personal stories from other legacy donors across North America. And as you hear these stories, we invite you to think about your why. Why did you make your legacy gift? Who or what inspired you to make this gift? And as you make these gifts and investments, why do you do this and who do you envision as the beneficiaries? Write it down. Share it in the chatter with someone else. These stories are part of who we are. They are also our legacy. Now let's meet some of you, our other number ones. The Jewish community meant a whole lot to us growing up because it was the place where we knew we were welcome. We were not accepted into the general community. That's why early on we realized that how important the Jewish community was to us and how we had to give back to it. We were raising our family primarily and we started in Charleston and then in, uh, later in Indianapolis. And we recognized that uh, others had already made it possible that there would be a Jewish community with agencies and organizations. And we very early recognized that it was important for us to make sure that future generations had the same opportunities. Seven of my great grandparents came here from Russia and people who know me know that I love my family. They all went to the same place I grew up, Knesset Israel Synagogue. And then they went to the YMHA uh, I was always there, and all my friends were always there. It was a feeling of, of really being held. The metaphor is, you know, we welcome you with open arms. I was walking into open arms, and they and they closed around me. And I, I never felt them let go. I'm an only child. I felt it's my turn to step up to the plate. I believe that we have to take care of our own. And if we won't, nobody else will. I really feel that this is something, you know, I try to pass on and instill on our children. When we were reviewing our estate plan and deciding what resources we wanted to set aside for taking care of our children, we realized that we needed to think about resources for organizations that are important. Um, that for our family now to be, if we weren't here, how would we make sure that those organizations are still around? My kids were getting on the bus for camp 
their first ever Jewish summer camp uh, experience. And as I watched the bus drive away, it, it hit me that the reason this is here is because people before me made sure it was here. And it was my moment. Who else, if not me, who else? I was born and raised in Charleston. My mom was born and raised in Charleston. Her parents are from Charleston. So we are definitely old Charleston Jewish. It's a small community and I would like to see it thrive forever. We had a, a tragedy in our family. My brother unfortunately um, passed away about a year and a half ago. And one of the ways that I really wanted to honor him was by leaving a legacy in my family's name to that synagogue. And that kind of opened up the door for me to think about possibilities of where else should I be thinking? Could I be thinking about leaving legacies to other organizations that helped me become me? In my home, every Friday afternoon, before Shabbat, my wife puts few coins in the box. It's just the idea that we need to help someone before we celebrate. We want to raise people with the idea of charity and giving is part of who we are. Giving is actually the Jewish way of living a life. Friends were living in Singapore. We went to visit them as a big vacation. And people said, is there any sort of strong Jewish community in Singapore? And I said, there definitely is. I went to synagogue every morning. Not only did they have a synagogue, but at the end of which there was a hot catered meal. It was a nursing home free for members of the community. Two thirds of the budget come from prior members. And that was very inspirational to see that a real concrete community like that, uh, supported by previous generations. We are legacy donors in two communities because we felt it was important uh, to make this kind of meaningful gift in the community where we had our business, where we raised our family, and where we still have children and grandchildren living. If I want the same thing to be there for my grandchildren, it's time. I want to make sure that there's a place to be Jewish here, that there is as welcoming a community uh, to, to help the people who come after me. I learned everything in Charleston, South Carolina through that Jewish community. That's where I got my Jewish identity and education and foundation. But it's in the Columbus, Ohio Jewish community that I am applying everything that I um, have brought with me into adulthood. That is the community where I'm helping to improve the world. It's not only for my grandchildren. I'd like to believe that whatever I can do to make those things that were available to me growing up, available to future generations. When I was growing up, my parents were new to the city. They sent me to a Jewish school. As we were older and had kids, um, made sure our kids went to, they went to the Hebrew school, they went to camp. That was so important to me. In order to have that strength of being, you need to know what your roots are, where you come from. Then you can go out in the world and be whoever you want to be. My parents led a really great example in philanthropy that as functioning members of community, you need to give back. When I grew up, I kind of had an aha moment that this is now my responsibility too. And what can I do? How can I make a difference? When you make a legacy gift, it's like writing it's like saying I was here. It's putting your name on the wall, literally. Your name will be put on the wall and um, there's no doubt about the fact that Nancy was here. Welcome back. I think I know what you're thinking after watching that video. I didn't realize there were so many Jews in the Carolinas. <laughs> I hear you laughing at home. Thank you to everyone in that first video. It's an amazing first trip across the country and into Canada as well. I've seen that kind of ruach and that kavanah, that spirit, in my career path because it's taken me to synagogues in Wichita Falls, Texas, Jefferson City, Missouri, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and now here to the Research Triangle. A couple years ago in Hurricane Florence, I even managed to get a kiddish delivered to my hotel in Myrtle Beach so I can celebrate Shabbat. My own story, though, it starts in Philadelphia. 
I'm the son of two rabbis. And I can hear all of you at home now nodding. That makes so much sense. Solomon Schechter Day School, all through high school, URJ, Camp Harlem, Israel Bonds, JNF, you name it, I've been a part of it, and they've all shaped my Jewish identity. No, you can see I did not go into the family business, but like my parents, in journalism I still get to educate, to inspire, to inform, to question, and sometimes even comfort my community. And speaking of community, my wife Grace, she's the life and legacy coordinator in the Raleigh-Durham region. We have two daughters, Rena and Romy. I appreciate them sleeping soundly tonight. And like me, Grace's strong Jewish identity is a credit to Milwaukee's amazing Jewish organizations, the synagogues, the youth groups, and especially her summer camp, Camp Interlochen in Eagle River, Wisconsin. As we consider the blessings of our upbringing, we also know legacy giving is not just about ourselves or our own children, but it's about all Jewish children. They need friends, they need experiences, education, a connection to those who came before, their own relationship with Israel, the chance to make an impact now, and the opportunity to build a better world. Our legacy gifts to Jewish organizations we hold near and dear to our hearts will be how we share our priorities with those we love and ensure they are not lost with the passing of time. If not us, then who? And if not now, when? We are gifts, and we are blessings. We are history in song. We are hope, and we are healing. We are learning to be strong. I think that there are Jewish values and morals and ethics that are conveyed Lador Vador from generation to generation. An old man is planting the tree and somebody comes by and says to him, why are you bothering to plant a, a new tree? You're an old man. And he said, because somebody planted that a tree for me. That's, you know, there were trees here when I got here and uh, I want to make sure that there's trees when uh, somebody else gets here. In the past, there were generations that did things for us. I would say simply because of Lador Vador. My Bubby and Zadie, my grandpa and grandma, you know, taught me great things. If I can give a financial gift to ensure that, that everything and everyone who supported me along the way remains in one way or another. Well, my parents' name is on that plaque and I take my grandkids to show them that was my mom and dad. You know, that would have been your great Bobby and Zeta. And they saw that this was important and that they would be so proud to know you're here. So someday, I hope my great grandkids will see our name up there. And it will, I hope, will incentivize them to be involved, to take pride in where they are. Lador Vador is the most important aspect of Judaism. And I'm also the only child in my family who doesn't have their own children. So through my legacy gift, I can ensure future generations of Jewish children who will grow into adults who have some sense of a Jewish identity. My son had his bar mitzvah in December. He did fundraising in his bar mitzvah experience to provide soup delivery and like a virtual warm hug to members of our community who were feeling isolated and sick and grieving. Watching that aha moment was really great. So I called my mom and I said, mom, thank you so much for teaching me how to teach philanthropy to my child so that rippled hopefully will continue to ripple for generations and i think we're collectively making the world a better place the first person to call us and say yeshikoa congratulations so proud of you was, was one of our children and when the rest of our children found out they also felt that i think that's the most important lesson i want them to have what they do always matters maybe there won't be any buildings named after us 
that's not the goal. The goal is to always be on the lookout for doing one more good deed. My daughter asked me, what's your Jewish legacy going to be, Mom? I said, well, it's my Jewish legacy is you and your sisters. You, you are the legacy. I took some thinking about it before I came to the conclusion that it was important to make a meaningful monetary donation. When I made my legacy gift, the first people I told were my daughters. It's about making a commitment for your future and for the future of the world and your community. You really want a younger generation to understand that legacy giving isn't necessarily about the check you write, it's about the commitment you're making. My parents setting the example up for my sister, my brother and I, and me in turn setting it up for my children so that my children know the importance of being active and showing up for our Jewish community now and forever. Mom, thank you so much for everything you've done for me, for instilling the importance of Judaism in my life so that I can pass it on to my children. The door of door, Nagit Gor Lecha. The door of door, we protect this chain from generation to generation. We have a beautiful religion and uh, we've been fortunate that we've been able to participate in so many activities and holidays and events and, and, and we want that for our children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren. <laughs>
We're making sure there are strong and vibrant Jewish communities of all sizes across North America. Elated because one person, Harold Grinspoon, a man I have the honor and privilege to work for, can have a vision, make the resources available to implement that vision, and engage thousands of individuals to bring that vision to reality. Optimistic that the Jewish community we are blessed to be a part of will continue to thrive because of your commitment. Grateful that you joined us this evening so we could celebrate you. Above my desk, I have the following quote from Margaret Mead. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And we have experienced this firsthand. In your community, there are a group of people who are serving on legacy teams, who reached out to you because of their dedication to ensuring the financial stability of Jewish organizations, who recognize your commitment to these individuals as well. I thank them from the bottom of my heart for all the time and effort they have invested in integrating legacy giving into your philanthropic culture of your community and for reaching out to you. Legacy giving gives each of us the opportunity to make a difference, to live our Jewish values, to transform lives. We have accomplished a lot since 2012, but I'm not ready to stop here. The journey is fun and our goal is too important. Like a vine, which symbolizes evolution, connection and growth, Reaching out to another and sharing your story is an easy way for you to magnify your legacy gift. Thank you for doing so. Think about what's really important to you. Think about where your values are. Think about the organizations that have had an impact on, on you and your life. The key for me is to know that the institutions that are presently here and maybe future institutions that develop will be available to keep a vibrant Jewish community and it will take a lot of money to do that. We were all going to Thanksgiving, big family Thanksgiving, and I thought, you know, I think I'm going to, when everybody's sitting outside, beautiful weather, I'm just going to go for it and I'm just going to talk about what legacy means to me, why I made my gift. I walked out of there with uh, six legacy gifts. Recognize the importance of what you've done and go out and tell your story to other people so that they would get involved as well. People will ask you, well, how much you know what's what's the amount and it's like no it's it's really not about amount it's about your commitment to the future it's about your commitment to the community you live in and to your children and your grandchildren you know since i believed in it and could see the tremendous opportunity that we rank and file people not necessarily wealthy could have an ongoing long-term uh, effect so I would speak about it from the heart. I was personally enthusiastic about it. I inspired my parents to make a legacy commitment in the Jewish community. Not only did I inspire them to make the gift, but I also inspired them to invite others to make gifts. This is the most important tool we have in our life and legacy toolbox. Wear the pin. It starts the conversation. And before you know it, my kids turn to me and says, what's the minimum that you can do? And how soon can you do it? In Jewish life, uh, tzedakah says that even the poorest person gives to somebody else. Uh, they may also be beneficiaries, but that doesn't, that doesn't stop them from being uh, givers. So, you know, what difference can I make? Well, everybody can make a difference, and that's the message. Everybody loves the idea because it's 
doesn't cost them anything. They can participate without losing a penny. The money is forever going to do good. And they can be proud to say we are part of the organization. If there's anything I can do to make the world a better place after I'm gone, I want to do it. And thank you, Life and Legacy, because you made it easy for me. It's such a painless way to do the right thing. The reason most people have not made a legacy gift is they haven't been asked. There happened to be a few shekels left at the end of the day. It would be nice if it went to a Jewish agency. That's really what we're talking about. I've always been a firm believer. One person can make a difference. And this is one way you, you do it. If I do my part and somebody else does their part and other people, we will be ensuring together a stronger Jewish community. Do it. It's very easy. Do it. Just do it. What can you do to make sure that your final words and your final blessing is the support of your community that you, that you live in? We should all be able to put our heads on the pillow at night and say, I did my best. The Grinspoon Foundation is in a class of its own. My family, my kids, we love being a part of PJ Library, getting those great books every month. This is one of my favorites, the Harold book. Yeah, let's open up here, read about our good friend. This is Harold. You can call him Buddy, Grinny, or even Hesh. Striking resemblance, isn't it? Well, let's see for ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now welcome Harold Grinspoon, the founder, benefactor of the Harold Grinspoon Foundation, and Winnie Sandler Grinspoon, president of the foundation. Thank you, Jonah. It's a pleasure to be with you this evening. We are so grateful for the opportunity to celebrate all of you for your commitment to assuring Jewish tomorrows. Harold, what would you like to say to the 18,000 legacy donors who have made legacy commitments to date? You are amazing. What you've accomplished, what you've done, is a real privilege for me to join you as a legacy partner. I am so pleased to be here with you and to know that we, as a team, have done an amazing job. Harold. You set an audacious goal for us for Life and Legacy in 2012 and challenged us to reach 70 communities in 10 years. Well, I have great news. We are currently working with 72 communities in less than 10. And over a billion dollars have been raised in future and realized endowment gifts to support Jewish organizations in those communities. How do you feel about what these communities have accomplished? I am so proud of all my partners, all my partners. I feel most indebted once again for all of you who are committed to the Jewish people. Well, Harold, I know that as a businessman, you are always focusing on leveraging your investments. Seeing how much has been achieved, in life and legacy in a relatively short period of time through these communities across North America gets me wondering, where might we go from here? Do you have any thoughts? Uh, are you still in the ball game? <laughs> so I say, we, what would happen if we re each person reached out to somebody else? What would happen if we all made that thing happen? That is an amazing idea. Imagine if one person were to reach out to one other person or one other family member and share their personal story. One person inviting one person to make a legacy. Imagine where that simple idea could take us. Let's go ahead and do it. Love that. I personally get inspired by imagining what our future will look like if 18,000 of you 
becomes 36,000 or 360,000 or 3.6 million. Wouldn't that be something? Are you up for that challenge? Uh huh. Direct message from Springfield. I got it. This just in you can magnify your impact. Be the one who reaches one. So there you have it, each one, reach one. Challenge accepted. My friends, it's been an honor and pleasure to join you, and maybe it's beshared, it's meant to be, that the first gala was at home, because really the legacy starts at home. It's a mezuzah on the door, lighting candles on Shabbat, a penny in the pushka. We thank you for being one who made a legacy gift. We thank you for reaching out to one another. We thank you for securing our Jewish future Todara ba Lailatov and Lahit Raut. Stay healthy and safe. We hope to see you soon. Good night.